mother to call this come and clean story because we have nothing to come clean about. But you see Joe's here with me. He's going to be in the room around here, maybe back and forth to the bathroom. Joe, I want to ask you something because I don't know, I can't remember the answer to it. When did we have freedom together? How old were you at that point? Where you didn't have to go months or years without seeing me? Twelve. Twelve, all right. When Joe was 12, when he was 10, I've, I've had time around him. Uh, and as a matter of fact, when he turned 10, I had all the time I wanted around him, but had zero parental control or anything with him. And I'm gonna give you the story behind this, what happened to Joe, how it's affected to Joe, and what Joe has overcame. Um, you guys know I'm a Christian. Am I a perfect one? No, not at all. Um, Joe was parentally kidnapped when he was three and a half months old. And this is why I'm in Columbia, and it's why Joe's in Columbia. This is going to be a long story. Um, I'm not going to go into the misleading that I experienced before I married his mother. Uh, I don't want to bash his mother because I, his mother's got some problems here. Uh, I found quickly after I married her and Joe was on the way that her whole family had a lot of these types of problems. And I stuck fighting for Joe and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of what I went through in that process. Joe was kept, we took a trip here in October of 2008 with the uh, understanding that at any moment in time I said well we need to go back that we would go back and that was actually promised in front of a whole church of people in front of a pastor in the United States. Uh, we got here, Joe got sick, uh, we rushed him to the hospital, it turns out it was altitude sickness uh, because the altitude's a lot higher here and he was okay. Uh, but his appetite had diminished so we took him to the hospital. When uh, this was about three days after we were here in Columbia in 2008, I go out, I held a cab, and as we're getting into the cab, I was informed, I, I informed my wife or while we were waiting on the taxi that we needed to return almost immediately to the United States because I didn't feel comfortable and Joe was sick. And that's when I was informed not on, my wife informed me, not only will I not be returning to the United States, but I won't allow Joe to return to the United States. I'm giving you vague particulars here, but I tried everything legally that I could try, and it culminated in me almost dying, and me making a 21-day walk uh, something which I made a diary of every day. I got lots of photographs. Uh, and here's what I did. I put a backpack on, and this would have been in 2010 going into 2011 during Christmas. I walked 21 days with no money, no food, no nothing with a backpack with a rain coat and uh, a couple of changes of socks and an extra pair of tennis shoes. And I'm glad I had that extra pair of tennis shoes because my shoes fell apart half the way through the trip. I was walking up treacherous mountains and walking down treacherous mountains. I was shot at, uh, I had people uh, police in one city tried to get a hold of me. I went through a lot of trouble with this. I ended up in Bogota 21 days later 
Uh, when I started the trip, I was about 165 pounds. When I got there, I was 111 pounds, if that gives you any indication. Um, I was skin and bones. I went to the U.S. Embassy, who did not offer me as much as a bottle of pop or a bottle of water and treated me like a pure dog. Uh, I had been falsely accused, something that you can talk about now, there's not much stigma to that today as it was back in my day, uh, back in that day, uh, in 2010-ish. Uh, there was still a lot of stigma about men, men being abused in different ways, false allegations and things of that nature. Today, thank God, more and more judges and judicial systems are believing men. Uh, no one chose to believe me. No one. Um, I almost died in front of my embassy. I was all over Colombian national television. Uh, and the embassy buckled down, he's a bad guy, we're not doing nothing for him, and I had done nothing wrong. I went down, I was on my hands and knees. The exterior guards, who were Colombian guards, the exterior guards of the embassy, were in total shock. They could not understand it. It was a big story throughout South America at the time. Uh, I guess you know who the president was, but I'm here to tell you it would have made no difference at piece of crap Obama or Donald Trump. If it happened today, uh, all this fictitious help that you think you'll get, you won't get. If you got a problem with a child, they're gonna turn their backs on you. Uh, it's like hands off for the kids. Now we can talk about it without that much a stigma because of the movie that just came out and all this trafficking that's been going on and a whole host of other activities. Uh, I returned to the United States. I almost died several times. I had lost my home. I had lost my vehicles. Uh, I had an electrical contracting company which was very successful. It was all gone, everything gone. I ended up being homeless for quite some time. I had nowhere to go. Uh, I got myself back up on my feet, uh, as any of you should expect to know me, and I did. Uh, well, those of you that really know me know I did, but those of you that don't, if you get any indication of me online, you would know that I would. And I got very sick. I did have help from uh, some good people. Uh, but I was kept from Joe for years. Uh, and I, I want to skip through a lot of this because this would just take me days and hours to go through who did what, who lied, what happened, why did all this happen. Uh, I want to go up to in 2000 and when did I come back here, Joe? When was I able to get back here? And then me and your mother kind of patched up 2017. and 2017. And uh, slowly, uh, due to the stepdaughter, I believe, the mother started realizing a lot of things and had, uh, uh, due to my stepdaughter, she had had some age on her. She was 18 or 19 at the time. She started realizing, hey, hold on a minute here. What my mother's done is wrong. Of course, when she was younger, she helped her mother do these things to myself and to her little brother, but she, she didn't know no better. Um, when I got back to Joe, uh, Joe was in bad shape, guys. Uh, he 
couldn't walk far. He, he couldn't run. Um, he had just been sealed like a prisoner in the house. Uh, he did go outside to go to school. He didn't participate in none of the athletic activities because he couldn't. He would immediately have somebody escort him back to the house. It's under, like under guard from my wife's family. Uh, Joe had eye problems. Um, he couldn't even go outside in the sun. Uh, it took months, I mean months, to get him to where he could go outside without a dark pair of sunglasses on at nine and 10 years old. He couldn't run, he had back problems, he had leg problems, and slowly we overcome all of that. And uh, so when you hear me say there are a lot of reasons that some of you know about of why we're here. We're still suffering the ramifications of this. Uh, we did go to the U.S. and it's the first time Joe, being aware, was able to see his home country. Uh, how long were we in the U.S., Joe? One week? One, two, three weeks. Three weeks. So we were in the U.S. about three weeks. Uh, Joe got to see some, uh, but I was reaching out for help there because I didn't have a house, I didn't have nothing, and I was forced to come back. Um, I do have a pension, but I didn't have enough put back and di didn't have, uh, my pension's very small, uh, but it's enough for us to live on but I had no means to go out and get a home for us. I had no car. And my own flesh and blood, who should, whom should have reached out to help me. Now, I don't have much flesh and blood even living anymore. Uh, basically, I had one person, and she was of no help. She didn't care. So we ended up really basically having to come back here. And now I'm in the process of trying to get finances in order because we're going back home. My body may not get back there, but my son's going home. And he's going to have a little bit to start on uh, to go to the university. I'm hoping he'll get scholarships. Uh, he wants to go into the U.S. Naval Academy. Uh, you know, they accept about nine out of a thousand. I think if they accepted one out of a thousand, he'll make it. He's a great student. He's got history behind himself already. Uh, as as a, lot, a lot of you know, he's an excellent young boxer. They're, the world's wide open to him. And I, he'll get home. I know I have faith in my Lord God. Uh, my God's more powerful than any of these things said against me. Uh, I should have died on the way to that embassy several times, but I made it. And the whole time walking down the sides of these mountains, up the mountain, down the mountain, hardly any air to speak of at all altitudes that the cars start malfunctioning in. Uh, I made it. I was in my 40s then, folk, my late 40s, folks, and I made it. Uh, Joe tells me daily, Daddy, if you had not gotten back to me, I'd be dead right now. And I believe him. I believe him. Uh, my wife and her family did these things. They did uh, so many more things, so many much 
misleading before I married her. Uh, but I'm glad it worked out like it did because I got Joe. Joe was the greatest gift I could have ever been given, ever been given. Uh, God knows that he was the greatest gift that God could give me from my heart. And we fought and we've clawed through things that most of you couldn't imagine. And it's time for the story to be told. It's time uh, Joe nor myself have any, any reason to be walking in any shame. Uh, he and I didn't do anything wrong. Others did. Others created this. We didn't. And we talked, and we've been planning, talked several times about putting some of this out there and continuing the story. But uh, uh, this morning I said, today's the day. Today's the day. Uh, I want to tell every father out there, don't you dare give up. I'm not saying anything bad about mothers. I'm not a woman hater here. I don't want anybody to even insinuate to go down that road. But fathers don't have any rights to their own children. This world is flipped upside down and it's flipped upside down for specific bad reasons to produce evil instead of good. Uh, no good. Uh, no good comes to a kid by, by that kid being kept from his father. Nowhere. Uh, even if there's problems between a mom and dad, those problems lay with that mother and that father. That doesn't mean one of the other parents can't, can't have, can't see their children. Um, it's time parents that falsely accused, uh, bad judges, bad people in the judicial system, bad policing, police, that they go to prison when they make these judgment calls where, where a parent is hurt, whether it's a mother or father. They're not qualified to make these calls. Uh, there should not be a family court as family court sits today. Uh, in any country, in any country, there should be a child court for the children. And instead of the parent who has the most money or the parent that acts the most victim or the parent that's more believable or the parent that these people feel sorry for, that that gets stricken and that the child has a right to both of his parents. Uh, Joe was suffering so many problems, some more problems than I can list here. Joe's not very talkative because he wasn't allowed to be around many other children. Uh, I had no idea it was as bad as it was or I would have gotten back here sooner and everything would have ended on a more horrible note. So I'm glad that God let me know things when, he, when, I, when I needed to know them and not let me know things when I did need to know them. Uh, Joe will win a world boxing title if he so chooses. Joe will be commander of the Pacific Fleet if he so chooses. Joe will be the president if he so chooses. Joe will be the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff if he so chooses. We come from fighting. Somebody out there needs to hear this and this is why it's being said. It's not being said for any other reason. No other reason. 
This world deals people horrible hands. Uh, many, so many people have been dealt many more horrible hands than I've been dealt or that Joe has been dealt. Uh, many, many more people. Um, I, I don't know if I'll put more out about what we've been going through, but when I tell you guys we are stuck here. I mean, we are stuck here. Uh, a plethora of problems. I can't believe that my wife allowed him to even go across the border. And it, had the situation not been monetary uh, for us to go across, uh, and she knew she wasn't going to face financial doom, he never would have been allowed to even go across the border at that time. But I always told people, and this is a warning to you bad parents out there that have stolen your children away from the other parent. Be very careful what you do because eventually your children will start talking. And see, Joe started talking. Nobody believed me but they sure believe him and what he's went through. And really, everybody that was in this situation and these people in these other situations that have made rulings or judgments that have hurt these children, they need to be held accountable. Not, not monetary, not just monetary. They should be, their freedom should be taken from them. And only until their freedom is taken from these corrupt or unqualified people that set in judgment of where these children are going to be and what's going to happen with these children, until their freedom is taken, uh, there'll be no quit and there'll be no change in any system. So we want everybody to know we love you. Uh, we're not perfect around here. We pray to God every day, every day. And we are blessed. Every moment of air I have around my son is a great blessing to me. And I feel very fortunate. And uh, I hope you feel that way about your children too. I really do.